Shalom, welcome back. This is part three of uh, the, the Didache, <clears throat> and we are at Didache uh, 6.1. We're going to begin this section talking about the Master's whole yoke. It says, pay attention just in case someone leads you astray from this road of righteousness. He is teaching you that which is beyond Elohim. If you can, hear the mas if you can bear the mo Master's whole yoke, you will be complete, but if you cannot, do the best you can. You know, and I think this is something that we should maybe uh, try to take into consideration within the Hebraic Roots Movement. Um, because there are people that have different understandings and different doctrines and, and such. If you can bear the Master's whole yoke, you'll be complete. But if you cannot, do the best you can. So, you know, if somebody is, um, is not following the commands the way you understand it. Um, they refuse to see it. I mean, you can always point it out to them, but there's no reason to get into these some of the heated arguments I see. Um, we each need to do the best we can. Um, you know, there may be some things you're not able to do. There may be some, um, especially, I mean, when it comes to, like, the dietary stuff. I've, I've actually come to the understanding that I, I think that we are... are Ideally, he's supposed to be vegetarian, and I know that in, in the in the Gospels it it shows uh, Yeshua as eating fish and giving fish to others to eat. Um, and believe me, I spent a lot of time really contemplating that, and wondering about it, and trying to figure out um, you know what that means. Um, and honestly, I, I, I'm inclined to think that, that, that somebody has went in there and altered the text to add in the part about the fish. Um, but I'm not going to condemn someone for eating. You know, I'm not going to tell somebody, you have to eat only vegetables. Um, but I do think that there's enough evidence that we have from what the early apostles did, what their lifestyles were, what they believed, um, to think that they were vegetarians, or possibly they only ate fish. Um, you know, you can do your own research. You can, you know, figure that out for yourself. Uh, for myself, I've just I've started eating vegetables. And honestly, with the way that the food supply is nowadays, if you're not raising your own meat, you're probably better off eating only vegetables. You know, you never you don't know what kind of hormones and additives are in some of the stuff we're eating. Um, I'm just, you know, throwing that out there. Uh, like I said, I know people disagree. And I know that, you know, it's a, it's a very hot topic of debate. You know, you start affecting somebody's diet, they will get pretty upset about it. Um, if you want information about that, there's a book. Uh, you can get it on Amazon for like 20 bucks or less. Um, the Lost Religion of Jesus. Um... You know, if you're if you're interested in that topic, you can read that book. I think it'll do a whole lot better job than me trying to explain it. So, the Lost Religion of Jesus, name of the book, find it on Amazon. If you want to know some of the reasons that I think uh, a vegetarian diet is what we were expected to eat. Anyway, it says regarding eating, do the best you can. Yet, by all means, abstain entirely from meat sacrificed to idols, for eating such is worshiping the gods of the dead. Now, 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 wait a minute. Doesn't somebody in the New Testament tell us that if somebody puts meat before you, you don't even ask any questions, just eat it? It doesn't matter if it was sacrificed to an idol? This, this in itself is extremely uh, different. In fact, I'm going to highlight this whole verse, I think. Now, notice that it says, you know, regarding eating, do the best you can, but by all means abstain entirely from meat sacrificed to idols. So, it would appear that, um, that there was more than just eating meat sacrificed to idols that you had to worry about. Right? I mean, you know, you could say that, that the implication here is, is that Eating meat sacrificed idol is is not the only command with regards to eating meat or, or to eating. Um, you know, it's because some people might say, "Well, 
it, I can still eat pork. It, it you know it doesn't matter as long as the pork wasn't sacrificed to an idol. I'm okay. But that's not the implication here. The, you know the implication is is that there is more commands other than not eating meat sacrificed to idols. But this above all else. Above all else, you need to make sure that you avoid doing this, right? Uh, it says, regarding mikvot, uh, mikvot is immersion. Regarding mikvot, here's how you will do them. After reciting all the necessary words, do mikvot in the name of Ha'avi, that's the father, and Ha'ben, the son, and Haruach HaKadesh, the Holy Spirit, in living water, running water. If you do not have running water, you can do mikvot in other water, and if you do not have cold water, warm will do. If you have neither, pour water on the head three times in the name of Ha'avi and Ha'ben and Ha'ruach HaKadosh. So, any of these are acceptable. The, the best case scenario, you do it in running water. If you don't have it, then you can do it in other water. So, it's acceptable to do mikvah in like a swimming pool or a um, you know, one of those little bathtub things they have in some churches, that that's acceptable. Um, and if all else fails, you can still just do the pouring the water over the head. Uh, so, you know, this is something I didn't know. I, you know. I didn't realize that this was... I always thought that the, you know, the Catholic Church just pouring water over somebody's head, I always thought that was unacceptable. But according to this, according to the words of the, of the apostles, if, if you have nothing else, do that. And in fact, in the ministry that, that I'm part of, the, the Vero Essene Yahad, um, our, our Mavakar, he will actually take you know, bottles of spring water, bless it, and he will send it to, to people. You know, I mean, we're, like, you know, our Mavaker, he, he's located in Vero Beach, Florida. But he'll have people all over the world or all over the United States contact him wanting to be rebaptized in the name of Yeshua. And so he'll send them a bottle of spring water that's been prayed over by him and the other members of the Yahad, and that person will do their own baptism at home because that's that's the best that we have. That you know, he can't drive you know, Jackson couldn't drive all the way from Vero Beach out to you know, Salem, Oregon, to baptize somebody. So, you know, we it's basically the implication here is you do the best you can. You do the best you can, and you get it done. You don't delay it. You know, I've been in churches before where people are wanting to get baptized, and they're like, oh, well, you know, you know, come back next week, or we'll, we'll do a baptism ceremony um, next year, or, or, or whatever. Um... But, you know, people who, who stand up, who, who ex decide to accept Yeshua into the heart, they do the altar call, they get there, and then they want to be baptized, and now they're told, well, you know, we'll try to do that next month. But according to the, the, the Didache, you know, there's a certain level of, um, of, of doing it, just getting it done, you know. Um, now, in the, in the Nazarene Acts, it says that... Um, Kifa recommends fasting for two or three days before immersion. Um, and I think that we should do that also. But, you know, if somebody's wanting to get baptized, do it in three days. Say, okay, you need to fast for today and tomorrow. And then, you know, the day after that, we'll, we'll meet down at the, at the river or we'll meet down at, you know, in the basement of the church or, or whatever it takes. Uh, here we go into fasting. It says, yet before baptism, let both he who cleanses and the one who's cleansed fast, as well as the others who are able. Ah, so see, this is, um, I didn't even know, <laughs> I was sitting here talking about this, I didn't even know it was sitting there on the screen, that uh, just like Kepha says, you need to be, you need to fast a day or two before. Uh, but do not allow yourself to fast with the pretenders, those who fast on the second of the seven days and the fifth, you must fast on the fourth day, on the day of preparation. So, um, you know, we've kind of wondered about what exactly is meant here. You know, who are these um, pretenders who fast on the second and um, of the seventh day and the fifth? So, let's see, the second day, that would be Monday, 
and the fifth would be Thursday. So who are the people fasting on Monday and Thursday? I, um, you know, it's kind of curious. I just I wonder who it is. But according to this, we should fast on the fourth day, which is Wednesday, and the day of preparation, which would be Friday. So every Wednesday and Friday um, are the days to fast. And admittedly, this is something I have not been doing. Um, now, I did spend a, a, a while, a couple of years ago, where I was fasting every Wednesday. Um, but for whatever reason, I got away from it. Um, so, you know, this may be something to consider doing and uh, implementing in your life. Uh, praying. It says, do not pray as pretenders, but as the Master commanded in his uh, Tov Besorah. Uh, it's his gospel. It's a good word. Pray this way. Avinu in the Shamaim, your name is Kadosh. May your Melikwa come and your will be fulfilled in Haaret as in the Shamaim. Give us our bread today. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. May we not be led into testing, but free us from the evil ones, since all the uh, Koach and Kavod through the ages is yours. So, uh, you know, these. I hate to keep using the word scholars, but it's an easy word. <laughs> so these scholars that study these texts, you know, they, they'll look at this and they compare this to the, uh, to the Lord's Prayer that's in the Bible, and they believe that this is probably the original, um, you know, Our Father, or the original, um, like the, the earliest version of the, uh, what's called the Lord's Prayer. So Avinu, that's Our Father in the heavens, your name is set apart, May your kingdom come, and your will be fulfilled on the earth as in the heavens. Give us our bread for today. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. May we not be led into testing, but free us from the evil one, since all the um, koach and kavod through the ages of yours. Koach is uh, honor and glory, I believe. And it says, pray this way three times a day. Okay, I looked it up. Koach is strength, so strength and glory. Since all the strength and glory through the ages are yours. And so pray this way three times a day. Uh, sacrifice. <clears throat> now on account of the sovereign command of Yahuwah in gathering to break bread and to give todah, or to give thanks, Confess your shortcomings, first off, to your sac that your sacrifice may be clean, then gather in Yahad, you know, gather in the assembly, in unity. I guess the unity is the better translation. So gather in unity and break bread while offering up your thanks, your todah. Do not allow anyone who is belligerent with his comrade to join in your kahal until all has been settled, so your sacrifice may not be filthy, since this is the sacrifice spoken of by Yahuwah. In every place and at every time, offer me a clean sacrifice, for I am a great Melech, says Yahuwah, and my name is awe-inspiring among the tribes. Okay. So one of the books that, that I recommend reading, and it's something that we've kind of uh, recommended to members of our Yahad, is to read this book by, uh, by a Dr. Friedman. The name of the book is Who Wrote the Bible? I mean, you can find it used on Amazon for like two dollars plus shipping. This this is absolutely a mind blowing book. I mean, this will completely change your perspective on uh, scripture, the way the scripture was put together. Um, in Doctor Friedman's book, he um, we can say theorized, but I really think that he proves it that uh, the the scripture was originally four different documents that were woven together. So we had this, what's called the J document, or the, or you could say the Y document. So that's like the the yod Hey vav Hey Torah. And so, uh, where you see, you know, Yahuwah, the name of Yahuwah, there was one copy of the Torah that always referred to him as Yahuwah. There was another copy called the E document that always referred to him as Elohim. And then there was what's called the P document, which uh, was the priestly document that was written by the, the priests and that promoted the priesthood. And then there was another document 
known as the D document, um, which was the Deutero canon, which was actually probably written by the prophet Jeremiah. Um, so you had the J, E, P, and D documents. Now, in the Nazarene Acts, Kepha speaks about this doctrine that they were taught by Yeshua that somebody changed the scriptures. And so you see, like in the book of Jeremiah, where he says, you know, the lying pen of the scribes have changed my word. Um, it seems like, and I haven't completely studied this out, but it appears, from what I can tell, the part that Peter is saying is the part that was added to Scripture was the P document. So basically, somebody took the J document, the E document, the P document, and wove them together. So like if you think of like a loaf of challah, the way you have like three pieces of dough, and the baker will sit there and kind of braid them together to make one loaf. That's kind of the way it was that they put together the Torah. And so, you know, Kepha, whatever he, whenever he talks about the lying pen of the scribes and the, the additions to Scripture, it all seems to be the text of the P document. So maybe if you could take the P document of, out of the Torah, you would have like the pure, undiluted um, Torah. Now, and I'm saying all that to say this, I really think you should check out that book, Who Wrote the Bible. You should get it and read it. It will. It is an amazing book. And in fact, he gives some, uh, the insight that Professor Friedman shares with the reign of King Solomon and kind of like the political, um, the, the socio-political uh, consequences of the reign of Solomon that in itself is worth getting the book for because it just blew my mind some of the things that that Professor Friedman brought out about about King Solomon and what his policies did to the nation. Um, but one of the things in the P document, the P document is the one that promotes Jerusalem only being the right place to to uh, to worship Yahuwah. But notice here it says, in every place and at every time offer me a clean sacrifice. For I am a great male, it says Yahuwah, and my name is awe-inspiring among the tribes. Um, that is a, it says it's a, a uh, concatenation of Malachi 1.11 and 14. Let's see what Malachi I'll pull up my Bible program here. We'll see what Malachi 1, uh, 11 says. Uh, Malachi 1, 11 says, For from the rising of the sun, even till it's going down, my name is great among the nations, and in every place... Incense is presented to my name, and a clean offering for my name is great among the nations, says Yahuwah of hosts. And then 14, no, is it 14? Yeah, Malachi 111, 14. Uh, but curses the deceiver who has a male in his flock and makes a vow. Um, for I, okay, uh, for I am a great sovereign, says Yahuwah of hosts, and my name is feared among the nations. Okay, so basically they took some of 11 and joined it to 14, and so that is, um, you know, where this, this quote comes from. But notice it says, every place, um, offer me a clean sacrifice, for I am a great melech. So, you know, I'm, now, but then again, the Nazarene Acts, whenever uh, Kepha is, Kepha and the apostles are debating with the priests in the temple, then, you know, um, Kepha says that Jerusalem should be the center of worship. So, so I don't know. You know I'm, I'm just saying that this is interesting to me. It says every place. When, um, you know, my understanding from Scripture, from the received text of the Torah, is that it should be one place. But then if, if we're going by what Malachi says, it seems to be talking about um, incense. Everywhere incense is presented to my name and a clean offering, for my name is great among the nations. Anyway, that's just me thinking out loud. 
Um, okay, we're at another good stopping point. We're at 20 minutes, so I think we're going to break this up into another part. And thanks for listening, and we will be back shortly. Shalom.